The Lord Jesus Christ has risen to reign. His is the name above all names. Let us crown him Lord of all. Let us worship God. Miraculous God, come to us now, even as your Son came to those first disciples on the shores of Galilee. Speak your peace to our hearts, touch us with your Holy Spirit, reveal your word, that we may hear your message this day and live as your disciples in the days and years to come. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Let us humble ourselves before the one who is Lord of all, who saves us by his grace, and who invites us even now to cast all our anxiety on him, knowing that he cares for us. Trusting in God's grace, let us confess our sin. Almighty God, you have raised Jesus from death to life and crowned him Lord of all. We confess that we have not bowed before him or acknowledged his rule in our lives. We have gone along with the ways of the world and failed to give him glory. Forgive us and raise us from sin that we may be your faithful people, obeying the commands of our Lord Jesus Christ who rules the world and is head of the church, his body. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The God of all grace, who calls us to eternal glory in Jesus Christ, will restore, support, and strengthen us. Let us affirm the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all, and also with you. During Eastertide, the Old Testament lesson is replaced with a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Today, the Apostles tell of the promise of the Holy Spirit and the ascension of Jesus in chapter 1. In the first book, Theophilus, I write of all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, 
but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazed up towards heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Here ends the Acts of the Apostles. Thanks be to God. Our Old Testament lesson today is recorded in the first chapter of Ephesians at the 15th verse, Paul's prayer. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, and for this reason I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the work of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Here, as the reading of the epistle, praise be to you, O Lord. Today's gospel lesson are the concluding words in Luke chapter 24 concerning the ascension of our Lord Jesus. Then Jesus said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And see, I am sending upon you what my father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then Jesus led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. And while he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven, and they worshipped him, and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple, blessing God. The Gospel of the Lord. Glory to you, O Christ. Please pray with me. Our Father and our God make us masters of ourselves, that we may become the servants of others. Take my lips and speak through them. Take our minds and think through them. Take our hearts and set them on fire. For we would see Jesus this morning. In his name and for his sake we pray. 
Amen. One of my favorite comedians growing up was the immortal Groucho Marx. As many of you know, Groucho was one-fourth of a comedy team of siblings that included brothers Harpo, Chico, and Zeppo. When they weren't making bizarre and zany films, they played the vaudeville comedy circuit and brought the houses down with their skits and songs and snappy patter. Groucho had a number of standard songs he had written and would sing. One of the ones I remember is the sermon title for today. Groucho first sang it as a duet with the classy Margaret Dumont, a, high, a frequent high society foil of his jokes. It comes to us from the 1930 film Animal Crackers. It's the two of them singing to each other. In the middle, it's Margaret Dumont. It goes like this. Groucho enters. Hello, I must be going. I cannot stay, I came to say I must be going. I'm glad I came, but just the same. I must be going, la la. For my sake, you must stay. If you should go away, you'll spoil this party I am throwing. I'll stay a week or two, I'll stay the summer through, but I am telling you, I must be going. <laughs> Believe it or not, this song came to me as I considered the scripture text from the Acts of the Apostles that records Jesus' ascension into heaven. I know. I know, my mind works in peculiar ways. You could almost imagine Margaret Dumont's part being played by all those disciples gathered there at Bethany as Jesus is taken up into heaven. Don't go. You'll spoil the party we are throwing. After all, you are the host. Luke, the author of this first history book of the Christian church, along with his fellow apostles, John and Matthew, each record a number of post-resurrection encounters of Jesus and his disciples. Some lasting days and weeks when he appeared to them here and there. But here, in the Acts of the Apostles, the time had come for Jesus to return to his Father and take his mercy seat beside the Father, there to intercede for us with God on our behalf. And in the process, to allow the church to be his body on earth for the rest of time as we know it. Hello? I must be going. I cannot stay. I came to say, I must be going. That church, his body, is right here between you and me as we reach out to one another via YouTube. Over 2,000 years later. Stop a moment and think about someone close to you, someone you know. Maybe it's your neighbor, maybe it's a friend, maybe it's a workmate, maybe it is your spouse or son or daughter. If they're there with you now, take a look at them right now. If not, then think of them in your mind's eye. Make eye contact with them. They represent Jesus to you, and you represent Jesus to them. Take a good, long look. Look into them. Embrace them with your eyes. The one 
you have in your mind's eye, who you are looking at is how we know Jesus in the flesh. Our Lord said to Thomas, you believe because you have seen me. Blessed are those who have not seen me, and yet believe. So, here we are. I wonder how often you look at your church neighbor, your next door neighbor, your coworker, your schoolmate, teacher, mentor, buddy, pal, or stranger, and look at them as Jesus looking at you. Maybe pain in the neck, battle axe, bozo, ball and chain, sore loser, bitter rival, milk toast, jerk, slob, snob, two faced, twit, half wit, dummy, danger, lone ranger, persona non grata, prima donna, alien, chameleon, hateful, spiteful. Often ungrateful, maybe. All these, maybe. <laughs> but Jesus? Yes. Jesus in all these people. A preacher once said that there is a Christ-shaped hole in the heart of every person that only Jesus can fill. And once filled, there's no turning back from the view. There's only turning back around in repentance. To see him in them and to be him for others. The body of Christ is an amazing thing in the world. This is what Jesus intended for us when he finally said, hello, I must be going. There is a necessary and critical need for the ascension of Jesus. He had to go so that we could learn to be the fullness of him in his physical absence. Jesus came that we might be forever united to the gracious love of the Father, and he had to go so that we, we might lean into the presence of the Spirit to be that love for the rest of it that is ours to live. Did you notice how he left his earthly home? In a cloud. Where else in Jesus' life was there a cloud present in the story? You remember? Yes, the Mount of Transfiguration. What was in, what was the cloud in that event? A divine Cadillac? A holy SUV? A stratocumulus chariot? No. The cloud was the presence of God. Think of the cloud in Israel's holy history. The cloud was the Shekinah, <coughs> the glory of God's presence. Do you know that when a service is concluded in a synagogue, typically uh, in certain traditions, the rabbi will hold up, kind of looks like that thing from Star Trek, but he holds up his hands like this and pronounces the Aaronic blessing. 
May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. You know what that is, these? It's the Hebrew letter shin. Shekinah. May the glory of God be with you. When Jesus was transfigured, he did so within the cloud in the presence of the two great bookends of Israel's faith. Moses, the priest, and Elijah, the prophet. In the reading from Luke 24 we just read, it refers to the law, the prophets, and the Psalms, the writings. Put it all together and you have the Hebrew Bible, Tanakh, Torah, law, Nevi'im, prophets, Ketubim, writings. It was in the cloud that Christ was affirmed by the bookends of the law and the prophets and the writings as the fulfillment of the promise of God's love echoed again and again in Holy Scriptures. The cloud of God's glory saying in essence, Jesus, my beloved Son, is the one. And when the cloud was taken up on the Mount of Transfiguration, what did Jesus do? He went down the mountain, back into all this stuff of our clay and our blood-soaked humanity to redeem it and us, bit by bit, drop by drop. And because he went down the mountain, we all could see God the Father more clearly in love with us through Jesus' laughter and tears and sweat and blood. He was our best self then in the full-blown humanity that makes us whole. And what of the cloud at Jesus' departure? It was the affirmation of God's presence to say, yes, he did it. He has conquered all. He has set the record straight, has righted the wrongs, and has made all things new and beautiful and fresh again. <laughs> the cloud was not a car. The cloud was God's glory present at Jesus' departure to witness from that point on. Whenever God looks at us, he sees us through the completeness of the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. <clears throat> in his letter to the Romans, Paul asks, who is in a position to condemn us? What's the answer? All answers, only Christ. Christ died for us, rose again for us, reigns in power for us. Jesus Christ prays for us. Oh, wretched mortal that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. What are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? For I am persuaded, I am convinced that nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ 
Jesus our Lord. Jesus had to go so that everyone in every age might claim his and her rightful share of the inheritance of his fullness in each and every heart. On this Ascension Sunday, you are his body. That person that you had in mind is his body. We are his body. The one who fills all in all. For Christ's sake, what difference will that make for you in how you live your life from this point on? To him, the conquering Lord of all, be all glory in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Please join me now for our affirmation of faith, prayer of allegiance to the King. At the name of Jesus, we let go of our hope in our country, our finances, our work, our abilities, ourselves. We put our hope in you. You are our strength, hope, joy, future, and King. Amen. Let us go before the throne of grace with our prayers this morning. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you for the risen and exalted Christ of our faith. Jesus, who reigns with you, who sits upon the throne of grace and prays for us even when we don't know how to pray. And so even in this time, we come before you trusting that Jesus is already praying as the Spirit is already praying for us in our weaknesses. We thank you, Lord, for giving us the charge to be your body, where we live, among those with whom we live, and as we live, we pray that we may reflect who you are, not only in the midst of our own hearts and minds and in our lives, but also as we make that known to others. Bless us in the ministry of presence, your presence, to the worlds in which we live. We pray for this world that you love so much. For all those places that are filled with strife, we bring before you the Middle East and all of the concern there that we have witnessed in this past few weeks. We ask your peace to settle in and among all those for whom each day is a concern, a worry, and a time of fear. We pray for other places and other nations that uh, continue to struggle against despots and tyrannies. We pray that your wisdom will prevail, O oh Lord, your peace will be present. We pray for this country that is oftentimes torn in pieces with various and sundry claims about this or that, with criticism 
abounding. And Lord, we need more loving presence in our conversations, in our speech, in the actions we make as citizens of this country, as those who govern, as those who serve. We pray for all the manner of people that serve, whether they be first responders, our uh, rescue personnel, our fire police, uh, all those in the military who try to maintain order, especially in places far away. For all those who are healthcare workers on the front lines of uh, the care that is necessary. We pray, O oh Lord, that you would encourage their hearts and Keep them strong in their service. Bless our congregation in this place and for all who are listening uh, right now via YouTube. Bless and keep each one. May everyone listening in today, right now, be blessed by your presence. By the uh, presence of Christ in the eyes as they look to their neighbors, their friends, their family, the stranger. Lord, we remember all those persons in special need today. Watch over and keep them, those who mourn, those who are continuing to rehabilitate, those who are infirm. Grant unto each the nearness of your presence and encouragement through love. Bless us now in this week to come. May all that we do and say be a reflection of you in us and all of us together, filling all in all in the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. now our unison prayer dedication. Great and mighty God, we praise you that Christ has ascended to rule at your right hand. We rejoice before the throne of his power and peace, for he has put down tyrannies that would destroy us and unmask idols claiming our allegiance. We thank you that he alone is Lord of our lives. By your spirit, give us freedom to love with his love and to embrace the world with compassion. Accept the offering of our lives and these gifts that we may obey your commands to serve in the name and for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Live simply. Love graciously. Give generously. Pray constantly. And having done all that, please leave everything else up to God. So we go, praising God. Amen. Now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you 
and give you his peace now and always. Amen. Thank you.